and it gives me great pleasure to introduce Cheryl Marcus, founder of Luke's UK, who's going to talk to you for the next 10 minutes or so. Thank you very much. Radio London, who came to interview me at the hospital by my bedside. And I hope you've maybe seen on the table I put the original letter copy on some of the tables. Anyway, they not only broadcasted in London, but eventually nationally. And this was to mean that I soon had friends with Lucas, and we wrote many, many letters together. But, as good as it was, it actually all became too much for me to handle. And I don't think the postman was any too pleased with me either. But I needed to find a way of sharing correspondence, gleaming medical advice, and to find support from outside sources. To put it into context, this, of course, was years before the Internet age. We didn't have an inkling, no thought about Google, Wikipedia, Yahoo. Tweeting was only to do with Tweety Pie, cartoon character at the time. And there were so many other strange names that now dominate our lives that now we haven't even, then we haven't even thought about. And in those days, information was scarce and really the domain of medical experts who were generally not too good at explaining in layman's terms, their situation to patients, particularly if it was a little known small print disease. However, while the internet has improved our understanding and enabled us to get reams of information at the click of a mouse, and who would have thought this was anything but a rodent, I firmly believe that personal communication and the ability to read about your problems in a dedicated magazine is irreplaceable. And I hope you'll all agree with me on that one. 
sometimes <coughs> too much information can be frightening. And rather than helping, can actually have a detrimental effect. So as far as I'm concerned, there'll always be a place for our group, Lupus UK, our magazine News and Views, and meetings where people can communicate, make lifelong friends, and talk with like-minded people. And I'm sure you've enjoyed that experience today. Anyway, I do digress, so I continue. I was talking about the sudden growth of friends with Lucas, who needed more information. And therefore, I felt the time had come for me to take action. So in 1979, I produced a photocopied newsletter which was issued from my home. Just two sheets of home typed copy paper that I called News and Views. But little did I know then that the small group of friends I had made would turn into Lupus UK with hundreds and then thousands of members. But meanwhile, I sat at my old typewriter, armed with carbon paper, <coughs> lots of tipex, and I found it all helped me so much to not feel alone anymore, but also to feel braver to fight all the battles that Lucas throws at us. I was keen to get consultants ranging from cardiac to nephrology to write articles for us. It wasn't easy. They were busy people, and I was only a lay person. But I had to become a professional nag. And I'm sure several articles appeared just to stop me nagging. However, as our membership grew, their support was to become obvious, and their encouragement was very, very exciting. Of course, maybe the fact that our group fundraising had grown with the enthusiasm of our members, enabling us to assist them with their research grants to their units, may also have been an encouragement. I was a difficult wife to have at that time, or maybe always actually. I found the typing hard with Lupus hands and trying to collate and stuff into envelopes became a nightmare. And I also knew that it was something I couldn't stop doing, as so many people became to rely on the magazine coming through their letterbox. At this time, I was also told by my printer that he would not accept typewritten copy anymore, but needed each issue, which had now grown massively in size and number, on a computer disk. Now we had come into the computer age. And so with great difficulty, I attended a computer course. I was awful and I hated it, but I had to continue. And actually Martin bribed them with bottles of wine so they'd carry on keeping me in the, in the class to make sure I learned. But eventually I did, and I was soon able to find that life became a lot easier for me. I remember being amazed at the look of the news and views once it came off the press. Suddenly it had a full colour front page, wonderful photos of achievements of the members and loads of information about the group, which was now flourishing with its own head office and staff. I was helped by Eric Howard, the then director of Lupus UK, and Geraldine Leonard, who has never stopped working tirelessly for all of us in an office in Rumford. And she's been there assisting each director in every aspect of their duties. And I do thank you on behalf of all of our members. were busy distributing the magazine, not only to all over the UK, but also Europe and America, and indeed many other countries. And so, fast forward 
2004, when I knew that after 25 years as editor, the time had come to hand over my baby to modern and more capable hands. And what better than our super director, Chris Meakin, and Christine Watkins, who have been doing an absolutely brilliant job ever since. It is a magazine. It makes the most of the social media age, which I've now accepted is part of it, and it is inspirational. And I do want to thank all at Head Office for making this possible. Last year, I suffered empty nest syndrome for the third time. The first two being when I, my, my eldest sons left home, went off to university. And the third was when I handed over all back copies of news and views from day one of the magazine to head office. So they now reside in Romford and they provide a great history of the inception and growth of Lupus UK. But more importantly, they show the advancements that have been made both medically and with research. This significant 100th edition shows what can be done if you really want something badly enough, if you've got great friends, brilliant doctors, and a head office who certainly go that extra mile. It is definitely not a case of what I have done for you, but what it did for me. It made me stronger to fight all my lupus battles, and there have been many. And I do believe that being occupied and not feeling sorry for yourself is a great medicine in itself. I'm not a medic, but do feel as a pensioner, and having had lupus since my early 20s, I am allowed to offer a little advice. And that is, do something. Be it going to an art class, going to a swimming pool, joining a book club, Go to the cinema, become active within your local group, write articles. But I have found how important it is to keep the body well by keeping the mind busy. I have loved coming to the conference and seeing many original members. Like me, some are older, but significantly still reasonably healthy and able to lead as full lives as lupus allows us to do. I do like to think that the group and News and Views has made some small contribution to this over the years, alongside more research and better treatment for us all. So I would like to thank everybody who has been on this amazing journey with me, particularly <coughs> Martin, and now, some 35 years later, I can look forward to receiving news and views through my letterbox. Thank you very much. <laughs>